Is that the last one? Yep. Well, we got the gate all fixed. Great. Um, look, guys, Brad and I have been talking, and we feel like we kind of owe you an apology. Hey! Hey! That was one horse, and we didn't even see you get it! Good God, you get more of the Wild West by listening to Slim Whitman for crying out loud! I couldn't imagine ever wanting to leave. Me neither. Neither can I, especially when there's just so much stuff to do. I especially love it when they run the end credits and show stills from the episode we just watched. As if to say, wow, what an adventure we had, huh? Hey, remember how we used to just stand around and talk about how we used to just stand around? You don't? Let me tell you about it. We used to just stand around and talk about how we used to just stand around and look out, a horse! Oh, thank God it's gone. Alright, so Hey Do was a bit of a buzz, but one show I'm sure most of you remember was the short-lived sitcom Salute Your Shorts. Though not exactly hilarious, it was a huge step above some of the other live-action shows Nick was doing at the time. It was about a king who had a wild, restless set of misfits who all liked to get into trouble. Their counselor was a guy named Kevin Ugg Lee, so you can guess what everybody called him. That's right, they called him stupid. No, they called him ugly, of course, as he tries to keep this army of kids well under control. Unfortunately, he's about as effective as Ernest goes to camp in this place. There were a lot of kids on this show, but a select few stood out more than most. There was that mullet kid from Terminator 2 named Bobby, who I guess was supposed to be the wise-ass of the group. I tell a ghost story and you buy hook, line, and stinker. I just cut one. Thanks for sharing. Donkey Lid, who seemed to have a speech impediment of all the Looney Tunes. I got everything you asked for. Hey, what's the difference? Suffering shock attacks! And Telly, who seemed to push the limits about what it meant to be a tomboy. Bet is, if you chicken out, you have to stand up in front of the whole camp and say how much of a wuss you are. And when I win, I'll wear a dress for the day. <gasps> a girl wearing a dress of all the horrid imagery! Ah! Ah! Hey, look, kid, it could be worse. You could be like the hermaphrodite on You Can't Do That on Television, who somehow looks more masculine in feminine clothing. How is that even possible? The episode that most kids remember is the Zeke the Plumber episode, where a lot of the kids are convinced that there's a supernatural ghost named Zeke who's haunting their dreams. Zeke the Plumber? That's not very scary. Now Joe the Plumber? That's terrifying. They all try to get back at Bobby for telling the story by scaring him in the middle of the night, which apparently doesn't work, until... Nothing in the world that I'm afraid of, except spiders. Somebody help me! Help! Please don't leave me out of here! Let's wait till he starts crying. <laughs> yeah? Please, somebody help me. Or at least until he gives away the portable TV. <laughs> That's right, let him suffer. That's what Jesus would do. Finally deciding to help him out, Bobby wonders why the other kids came to his rescue. And even knowing what a jerk you are, we still came to the rescue. Why? Because you're my friends? No. <laughs> Maybe it's because we wanted to hear you suffer. Ah, uh, hate, vengeance, anger. Truly, Ugg has taught these kids great moral values. I just cut one. We all have, kid. We all have. Actually, Ugg is sometimes more threatening than he is charming. I mean, look at how he reacts to this kid for digging a hole and hitting a water pipe in his baseball field. There is a very deep hole in the middle of my infield. Eventually, this hole will fill up with water and this scum will float to the top. Then, Bobby Butnick, <laughs> you will be mine. And you will know my name is the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon thee. You may also have noticed that Salute Your Shorts likes to show things three times for some reason. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. While not exactly great, Salute Your Shorts did at least try to put some good jokes together and try to make us laugh. And on the whole, it wasn't that bad. It was entertaining enough, the characters were fun, and they actually took advantage of the location they had. But seriously, isn't there a Nikcom out there that was both creative and funny? Isn't there a show that had really good writing, funny setups, and interesting characters? Isn't there a... <laughs> now here's a show that kicked ass, The Adventures of Pete and Pete. This show was so strange and yet so funny at the same time, making all the little things Kid noticed seem like huge, groundbreaking adventures. It was kind of like Seinfeld for kids, taking small, unimportant circumstances and turning them into giant, hilarious events. But its brand of strange humor was all its own. 
The show started off as a series of shorts, and when I say short, I mean short, like one to two minutes at the most. And since they're so short, I can just go ahead and show you an episode, give you an idea of just how strange it was. Somehow my brother Pete had gotten a job as a stockbroker. What? Ellen was teaching old people how to air swim. Huh? And me, I ended up cutting the longest, stupidest lawn in the world. Okay, that kind of makes sense, but... I began asking myself deep philosophical questions. Like, do dogs go to dog heaven when they die, or do they go to regular heaven? What? Then I tried to blow up passing cars with psychic energy. It only worked once. How? Then the heat would get to me, and I'd start hallucinating about Ellen. But then there she was, with a popsicle and her air swimming cap still on. Why? I told her I still had six miles to go. I'll just walk with you a little ways then. What the hell was that? It was like a drive-by of randomness. It just came and went. And it was so funny. The show was pretty much a longer and more detailed version of the shorts, which had every bit of that strange suburban weirdness. Like the fact that their mother had a metal plate in their head that picked up radio waves. Or the fact that for some reason young Pete has a tattoo called Petunia on his arm. Or the fact that, I don't know, they're both named Pete. I mean, what the hell? What parent would be so cruel? It's like naming all the Baldwin brothers Alec, and God knows one Alec Baldwin is too many. There's another character called Artie, the strongest man in the world. Artie, the strongest man in the world! And maybe I'm missing something, but is Artie, um, special? I never really understood this character. He was kind of like Where's Waldo's mentally handicapped son. I never really saw the point to him. But then again, I guess the whole show is just about asking the question, what's the point? To be honest, I always thought the show was kind of based on the daydreams that a lot of children have while sitting through school. Like, I love the episode where Ellen asks the question, what's the point of algebraic word problems? Every teacher who thinks it over can't give an answer and ultimately goes crazy. Or how about the episode where the kids going to the pool during adult swim hours is literally an act of war? It's like when you reach that point of daydreaming about a real situation and then you suddenly say, no, that could never happen. That's where Pete and Pete rolls the credits. They push those strange, surreal dreams just far enough to a point where it's over the top, but not unrelatable or not fun to watch. I also like the fact that the age difference for them is pretty big, so you have the overblown issues of a teenager as well as the overblown issues of a little kid. So that really brought in the horizons a lot, as well as the audience. It was one of Nickelodeon's best, making the tiniest of problems seem like the most epic of battles. And we loved every minute of it. Nickcoms weren't always great, but they were certainly fun. And if they didn't keep trying to cross the line of reality and surreality, we never would have gotten shows as awesome as Pete and Pete. So, whether it's writing great material or a load of elephant shit... Don't look into his eyes. They'll haunt you. Nikons will always be there to help us on the creative path. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it so you don't have to. Elephant. <laughs> Sleep well, suckers. I just...